Hi guys! Recently we filmed a video with an alibi puppy in the woods. After the day was over, we decided to check out another interesting place. Near the forest was an estate from the century before last, owned by a local influential baron. According to some reports, during the Second World War there was a military hospital here. Now the whole area is abandoned and densely overgrown with trees. Even the staircase leading to the estate is so covered with trees that it took a long time to find it. Let's take a look inside. And inside, predictably, it was a mess. In some places, even the ceiling has collapsed. But it's still an interesting place to explore. The estate consists of several interconnected buildings. And in one of the buildings, we were waiting for an extremely interesting discovery. Under the rotten planks of the wooden floor, Misha smelled something and started digging. Is there something in this ruined place? When we decided to help him, it turned out that there was a secret niche under the boards. It revealed an ancient chest, or rather, some kind of box. When it was opened, it turned out that inside all these years lay the most real treasure. In the foreground was a pile of some old lock tools and a small book. The find is quite unusual, we should look at it more closely. And now we are finally in the hangar, so it's time to take a closer look at what our treasure consists of. The first thing that catches my eye is the extremely unusual lock. The box itself is divided into two compartments by a partition. The first contains someone's personal belongings, and the second contains a set of tools. What about personal effects? The Book of Turgenev stands out, of course, edition of 1954, in which you can find extremely interesting illustrations. What else is there? The compartment also contains a dusty glass, a pack of cigarettes, and a folding knife. The knife is rather short and corroded. And cigarettes Vatra DNEPR, have yellowed from time. The USSR Ministry of Health warns, smoking is dangerous for your health. By the way, a pack of 20 cigarettes of the third class costs only 25 kopecks. 20 now let's consider a set of locksmith tools. It is quite classic and stands out except for the amount of rust. From the whole set, we were puzzled by only one thing. Its purpose is completely unclear. What can be done with its help at all? Who knows? Write in the comments. The place we stumbled upon turned out to be quite promising from the point of view of research. So when the rains ended, the weather improved, and the ground dried up, we returned to the same place, but armed with a metal detector. The metal detector has been sitting idle for almost two years. After ten minutes of searching, we found the first discovery. What could be there? Almost immediately, the shovel begins to scratch something, but no miracle happens. It's just a concrete slab, inside of which, apparently, the rebar on which the device reacted. We do not despair and continue our search. There was another find waiting for us right next door. Let's hope that it is not a concrete slab, but something more interesting. Having dug a hole, we found out that the metal detector does not react to it, but to a pile of dug-up dirt. 
Did we really already find something? After checking every bit of dirt, we found a cover. In the following hours, we found a lot more junk, but we decided not to give up and continue our search. Finally, we're ready to show the most valuable find in the vicinity of the estate. This time, after a lot of searching, we dug up something really interesting, namely a clay pot. It was a bit broken, but that didn't make it any less valuable. Having taken the pot out of the pit, something unexpected was waiting for us. It turned out that the utensil object is completely empty, and there is nothing inside except for lying soil. Something seems amiss because can a metal detector not react to the clay the pot is made of? But what if the object that the metal detector reacted to is still in the pit? I mean, if they were coins, they could have simply fallen out. We have repeatedly seen on YouTube discoveries of ancient coins located right inside pots. Having found nothing at this depth, it was decided to continue the excavation. Soon, we came across some wood. Could it be a chest? After digging up another pile of dirt, we still managed to extract it. It turned out that we had found an antique doorstop attached to a charred piece of wood. Judging by the shape, the find has more to do with Tsarist Russia than Soviet times. Anyway, for the sake of the pot and the curtain, we had to dig a pretty big hole full grade deep, so don't forget to bury it behind us. We took the pot and all its pieces back to the hangar with us. We even managed to put all the pieces back together. It was probably us who broke it with a shovel while digging it up. The manor is not the last attraction in this area. There is an old abandoned village eight kilometers away from it. It is absolutely unclear for what reason all the inhabitants were evicted from here. But except for the rare remains of foundations and concrete blocks, there is practically nothing here. Here, for example, is the foundation of a house that was wiped off the face of the earth long ago. And such skeletons of the forgotten past dot the whole area. There are also enough trees that were planted a long time ago. For example, someone had a tree in their yard that was planted especially for Christmas. And there are a lot of fruit trees, in particular apricots, apples, plums, nuts, and others. But it's still too early to harvest, and that's not why we're here. Our goal is to search for valuables that can be found in the ground. We immediately change the metal detector to search for non-ferrous metals, because it is clear that there is a lot of ordinary iron here. Gold, on the other hand, is good for us. All that's left is to find it. Well, metal detector in hand, and forward to explore the area. This time, we didn't have such an instant success as we had in the vicinity of the estate. We spent three days in this area, and this level of effort was definitely not without success. Here are the latest finds, all made of non-ferrous metal. But there was a really worthwhile find. In one of the places, a piece of half-rotted cloth was found in which coins and a silver saucer were wrapped.
Delighted with the find, we went to the hangar where we washed and cleaned all the items from that skein of cloth. We could now get a better look at them. Apparently, the most valuable item from the treasure is the saucer. It's made of 860 sterling silver. The sample is viewed as extremely problematic, but in any case, we were able to consider this figure. By the way, the weight of the product was exactly 39 grams. And for example, a 50 Kopex coin contains exactly 10 grams of pure silver. By the way, what about the coins? We have 10 Kopex of 1924, 15 Kopex of 1932, another 15 Kopex of 1924, and 50 Kopex with a star of 1922. It's not for nothing that we've been wandering around this wasteland for three days. But that's not all we found. We were so enthusiastic about the search that we decided to go even further and buy ourselves a search magnet. It's not big at all, only 250 kilograms, but we don't want to lift a tank from the bottom of the river. With it, we went to an abandoned bridge, which was once built to lay a branch of the subway. I wonder what's waiting for us at the bottom of the river. The first throw and we immediately picked up a whole pile of magnetic dust from the bottom. In the end, the most valuable find from this location was a rusty bucket. On one hand, not so cool, but on the other hand, we at least picked up garbage from the bottom of the river and this is already useful. And we also managed to catch a lid. The main part of finds from the bottom were pebbles of iron ore. By the way, separating them from the search magnet is a challenge. Generally, this location is not the most successful for our purposes, so it was decided to change the location. For the second attempt, we chose a pedestrian area with a picturesque bridge over the river and started throwing the magnet with the hope of an interesting catch. Unfortunately, we had less luck this time. We made a series of attempts, throw after throw. There were attempts from the bridge, then on one side, then on the other, and even from the shore, but the result was always the same. And finally, here it is, the long-awaited find, and it is a can. In accordance with classic search traditions, it was decided to change hands, and Vitya almost immediately on the fifth attempt magnetized some unknown thing. We looked at the strange object for a long time and could not understand what it could even be. A knight's helmet with a very small head or a prehistoric dustpan. One thing is certain, this thing has been in the water for a long time. The iron has rusted away and breaks off in chunks without much effort. Subsequently in the hangar, it was decided to resort to the most convenient method of knowledge, namely Google. Suddenly it turned out that our find was a Soviet license plate for an apartment building. Such are our search operations. That's all for now. Bye-bye.